Hey, I'm Axel from HitFilm, and this week we are creating a holographic display in HitFilm Pro. Pacific Rim Uprising is coming out soon, and so this week's video is a throwback to the original Pacific Rim and those sweet color separation holographic displays that they use. If you don't have HitFilm Pro, go and grab it now during our January 2018 sale, and you can save 15%. Once you have HitFilm Pro, download the project files linked in the description of this video, and let's get started. Here's the shot we are going to add the display to, and the first thing we need to do is create a 3D camera solve using Mocha HitFilm. Add Mocha HitFilm to the layer, then open the controls and click the Launch Mocha UI button. You might recall that last week's tutorial, where Javert replicated a time freeze effect with snow, also started with a Mocha track. We use some similar techniques this week, which I like because we're creating an entirely different effect, so this is a great demonstration of how basic underlying techniques can be applied in a variety of different contexts. So, we are going to track this front panel of the console, and then the frame surrounding where the display will go. The chair is a bit in the way though, so let's mask out the chair first. We could use tracking for this, but it's a simple movement and we don't need accuracy, so I'll just use a few manual keyframes. Hold the Z key to enable zoom control, and drag down to zoom out a bit, to create some space around the edges of the video. Then, select the X spline and draw a shape around the chair. Right click to close the shape after you have created all the points you need. Now, scrub forward until the chair is just out of frame. We want to move the mask now so it lines up with the chair's new position. Drag a marquee around all the mask points to select them all, then drag any one of the points to reposition the mask. Then, move back toward the beginning of the timeline and adjust the position as needed to line it up. Rename this layer Chair, and disable its tracking option, and then we can get to the actual tracking. Find a frame in the middle of the video where the panel is completely visible. Draw a rectangle all the way around it, keeping the spline fairly close to the edges, but with a little bit of a gap. Right click to close the shape again, and then grab the blue handle on one of the corners. You can drag individual corner handles to adjust each corner individually, but we will hold control while you drag outward on the handle to tighten up all the corners at once. Rename this layer to Panel and drag it below the chair layer so Mocha knows the chair is in front. Then let's set up the planar surface. Click the Show Planar Surface and Show Planar Grid buttons and drag the corners of the planar surface to the corners of the panel just inside the metal frame. As we do, the grid aligns with the angle of this panel. This gets us a nice alignment, but our surface is pretty big, and Mocha prefers to have a smaller surface if possible. So we could eyeball a smaller surface, watching the grid and tweaking it until it aligns, but it's easier in this case to line it up with these big edges, then just grab the sides of the plane rather than the corners and shrink it down. Our alignment remains perfect, but we can create a smaller surface in the middle of the panel. Set the minimum percent pixels to 90 and enable perspective. Then track back to the beginning of the clip. Our layer order tells Mocha that the chair is in front, so when these splines overlap, the overlapping area is ignored by the tracking algorithm. Jump back to our first keyframe, then track forward to the end of the clip. This bit is sped up to save time. Once the tracking is done, disable tracking for that layer so it doesn't get tracked again, and let's track our second surface. This one is a little bit trickier because there isn't a large surface to work with, but we can use several smaller surfaces and still get a great result. So select the X spline and draw a spline around the left-hand side of this mounting bracket bar thingy, avoiding the bright glare near the light. Right-click to close, then hold Control and tighten up the corners. Then select the Add X Spline to Layer tool, which lets us draw another spline without creating another layer. Draw a spline around the other side of that bar, then tighten those corners as well. Using the same tool, draw two more splines around the front faces of the two vertical pipes. If you were wondering, couldn't we just draw one shape around each side instead of using two overlapping splines? The answer is yes, you absolutely can if you want. I just found it easier to use separate rectangles. Plus, it gave me a chance to show you the Add X Spline tool. 
Now we need to set up our planar surface, and we will use a similar method. Use the corners of the space between the frames to get our alignment. Then drag in the sides of the surface to make it smaller. Since this is where our effects will actually be placed in the final shot, the position of this surface is more critical. Let's leave the bottom edge where it is, and move the top and sides in a bit to reduce the size of the surface. A big spline and a small surface makes for a happy mocha. Set the minimum percent pixels to 90 and enable perspective. Rename this layer to Frame and move it to the bottom of the layer stack, since this is the farthest from the camera. Now, track like you have never tracked before. Actually, no, track exactly like you have tracked before, by clicking the Track Backwards button. Even though our chair doesn't overlap this layer at all, getting the layer order right is still very important. Mocha is going to try to figure out how these layers are moving in relation to each other, to calculate the camera position, and knowing what order the layers exist in is a vital bit in that calculation. If you want an accurate result, then giving Mocha accurate info to work from is critical. Okay, with our two layers tracked, we can now let Mocha calculate a solve. Click the Camera Solve tab, then select the layers that you want to be included in the calculations. The chair layer is just a mask, so we don't want that included. Select the Panel and Frame layers, then click Solve. Mocha does the hard part, running loads of maths and probabilities and algorithms, probably multiplying the square of the hypotenuse and stuff, and boom, we get a solve. The solve quality is nice and high, too, and we like that. So, now we export our results back to hit film. Again, we first want to select which layers we need. In this case, we don't actually need data from the panel, just the frame is sufficient. So select the frame layer and export. Click Save and name the file whatever you want. Hollow track, perhaps? Back in Hit Film, select Import Composite Shot and choose the one you just exported. Mocha Hit Film uses a plane as a placeholder for your video. This might seem odd at first, but there is a reason. Mocha doesn't actually directly access your video file. It uses referenced images that it receives from Hit Film, and this allows you to track video files that Mocha doesn't support, or even composite shots containing multiple layers. And once we are in Hit Film, we just delete the plane, drop in the video, and we're good to go. Up next, we need to build our GUI to add into our tracked scene. So right-click the GUI image and choose Make Composite Shot. Set the length to 501 to match our video clip and click OK. Then add meters.png to the comp as well. The meters are all full, but we can use masks to animate some movement into them, and movement is always good in a high-tech interface. I used one mask for each meter, dragging a rectangle to set how much of it will be visible on frame 1, then keyframing the position of the rectangle randomly over time to add some movement. You can use as many or as few keyframes as you like, depending how much movement you want. If you start with a mask shape that is long enough to reveal the entire meter, then you don't need to adjust its size at all, just slide it back and forth. Once we have the masks done, add reticle.png as well, and adjust its position so it is centered on this circle. Then we will keyframe its rotation using the same technique, randomly advancing and tweaking the value to create some movement there. Great! Now let's switch back to our main comp and add the GUI composite shot to it. Convert it to a 3D plane and parent it to the frame center point. Then open the transform controls for the GUI, right click on the transform title and reset them to zero. Now it is using the exact position and orientation of the tracked point and we can adjust it from there to sit right where we want it. Scale it up first so it fills more of that space, then dial in the position. You may find that tweaking the rotations a little gives you a better alignment with the console, but this may vary based on the actual solve you export from Mocha. The main concept of this display is that we will use four copies of the graphic, separated in 3D space, and each one containing different colors. So, let's make this one blue to start with. Add the channel mixer effect, and in the red and green channels, 
zero out everything. In the blue channel, leave the blue on. If you want, you could even turn it up further to boost the blues in this channel. Now, add the diffuse effect to our layer and choose soften from the diffuse preset menu. This adds a little bit of blur to give us a glowing effect. Finally, right click the layer and set the blend mode to add. Now to make some copies. Select the GUI layer and press Command D or Control D on Windows three times to create three more copies. Rename the layers from the bottom up GUI Blue, GUI Green, GUI Red, and GUI Yellow. Select a layer and hit Return on the Mac or F2 on Windows to rename it. With the renaming done, select the three upper copies and parent them to GUI Blue. This zeroes out their position values in relation to the parent layer, so we can easily adjust the depth of each one to create space between them. Select the green layer, open its transform controls, and set the position Z to 150, and it jumps out in front. Then open the channel mixer and zero out the blue controls, and in the green controls, crank up the green channel. We will take similar steps for the red layer. Move it out another 150 for a total Z position value of 300. Then zero out the blue channel, and in the red controls, increase the red channel to 1. The fourth layer in the Pacific Rim displays is yellow. So here is where we actually do a bit of channel blending. First, move the yellow Z position to 450 to get it out in front, then zero out the blue once again. But this time, in the green channel, raise the green to 1, then in the red channel, raise the green to 1. The green and red channels contain different information. If we raise the red channel in the red controls, we get a totally different result. We don't want the red in this case, as it makes the words harder to read, so instead we are using the details contained in the green channel of the source image and filling that area with red and green, which combine to give us yellow. So this is essentially a yellow version of the green channel of the image. Now we have all four layers arranged over the bright emitter down below, and we are almost done. Let's use the gleam effect to add some streaks to the emitter light. By setting their position using a point layer, we can ensure the alignment stays correct while the camera moves. So create a point layer, set it to 3D plane, then parent it to the frame center layer. Zero its position, then move it down so it is just below the light. Then drag Gleam right onto the original layer and set the Position Use Layer menu to our new point. If you need, adjust the point position now so that the angle of the rays lines up. Set the minimum value of Gleam to 0.59 so only the brightest areas are affected. Then set Ray Length to 78 so the rays reach up to the bottom of the display and intensity to 4.1 or so, so they are decently bright. Finally, let's add a touch of color grading to the shot using the color correction wheels. Add them to the video and push the highlights well into blue. Push the shadows into blue as well, not quite as much, but enough that everything is going bluish. Then to counteract that a bit and bring the colors back to a more natural look, drag the midtones in the opposite direction away from blue into the yellow-orange region. And that finishes up the shot. Let's start building a RAM preview so we can watch it in real time. We have set this effect up so that each of the colored images is different, since they are based on the RGB channels of the image. If you wanted them all to be the same for some reason, you could do that as well by using different settings in the channel mixer. It's really up to you. So let's go ahead and watch this through, see how it looks. And there is our Pacific Rim display. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you find the information useful. And until next time, I bid you adieu.